Hey guys, how are we doing? Crypto Insight UK here, bringing you back another YouTube video. So today I'm actually going to cover something called what I think could be the ultra bull case. Now this isn't a base case. This is literally, as it, sound, as it sounds, the ultra, ultra bull case. It means that if the stars align, this is what could happen. Again, could. Um, just quickly before I touch on that though, I'm just going to say that we had the weekly close yesterday for crypto. Bitcoin had a nice strong week after two weeks of indecision. It brought us back into the middle of this range. Again, we need to watch uh, for this week. This is going to be the important week, really, uh, or one of the important weeks. I'd like to see how the institutions react after a weekend, um, actually, where alts pr did pretty well. And obviously on Friday was Jackson Hole, so the institutions didn't have much opportunity to respond to what Jerome Powell said. He said that we're basically moving into a period of um, looser economic policy and Bitcoin has been one of the best performing assets um, historically during these periods. So eyes on basically what the institutions do today. Um, that's like with ETFs and what America do when they wake up today. Remember that I am on my in my base case um, like worried about the DXY, like not worried, but like as in terms of I think it's going to bounce um, because it's oversold both on the weekly. And also, if we look on the daily, uh, oversold on both of those and being at the bottom of this range. And I also think that that probably translates in a bit of a pullback in stocks. Um, as I think they are touching their all time highs, yet um, momentum doesn't look great uh, as of right now. Things could change. Things could change. So let's get into my ultra bull case. I'm not going to spend too long talking about anything else because I want to really get into that. There's a possibility. Bear in mind that my whole thesis currently resides around the fact that we have an election in November in the US and before that, liquidity is going to flow into crypto and assets in general, but crypto because um, we, we focus on crypto. Um, that probably comes in October. And before that, before October, there's probably some reason that they need to solve a problem like the Fed and the Treasury and the government together all can and governments around the world have to solve a problem together to be able to enable this liquidity uh, to flow into the system, whether that's like, I don't know, sometimes short term pullback in stocks or some sort of crisis or something like that, that enables the Fed and the Treasury to lose some monetary policy, print capital and uh, push it into the market. So the ultra bull case for crypto specifically, we get a week jobs report in in um, August. So we've got like, I think it's probably coming this week. We get a week jobs report. Maybe it's uh, the stats come the start of next week. Um, and this enables the Fed to make a 50 basis point um, cut and obviously making mon monetary conditions looser and everyone gets bullish off that. And crypto is often the first thing to respond to any sort of like easing cycle um, as it's the most liquid market, supposedly, like people can get capital in and out very easily and quickly. So that's that's one thing that I'm looking at. That's one of the bullish cases. Another bullish case actually is gold cools off a little and some of that cool off rotates into crypto. So gold was roughly a 10 to $12 trillion market cap at $2,000. Um, for gold, like gold was gold was a ten to twelve trillion dollar market cap there, and now if we look, it's at sixteen point nine trillion. So let's just say seventeen trillion. So in this space, from here to here, in in this twenty percent increase in gold, it's gained anywhere between five and seven trillion dollars. Now the total market cap of crypto right now is about two trillion ish. Let me just quickly double check that for you, so we can just make this statistically correct 2.188 trillion as we speak so gold has gained three times ish the amount of market cap in crypto just since it's broken out that 20 percent, which actually was uh, when was that gold's gained since march gold's gained three times the market capitalization of crypto so I think gold looks a bit overheated here, um, bearish divergence on the weekly, been ripping, short term pullback probably on the cards, maybe even just a pullback of like, 
a few percent, say 7% into this area here, 6%. That's probably a $2 trillion, $3 trillion pullback. So where's that capital going to flow? Well, if we are seeing like one of the theses actually I wrote about at the start of this year is that I thought people would move to gold first and then some of that might rotate into crypto as people um, move from uncertainty in the dollar to knowing that policies are going to get looser and then move into the best performing asset on the fastest horse being Bitcoin and crypto. So maybe that two trillion flows into crypto. That would give us a hundred percent move on market cap in crypto if we obviously got all of that two trillion. So that's one thing. Another thing is, let's say the DXY actually does fall, and, and there's a lot of ifs and buts and maybe's in this ultra bull case, but that's why it's the ultra bull case. If the DXY does break down out of this zone, people are going to be selling um, US assets. So probably the S&P would go down. This is why I said on a tweet this morning, we would need to be uncorrelated to the markets if this was the ultra bull case if it's an if not all these elements have to happen remember but these are like the whole the stars are aligning everything's going right for crypto so the dxy falls out of its range that probably means that foreign investors are going to start selling down on u.s equities because they buy they buy u.s equities in dollars abroad so so equities they would then want to get their dollars out because their dollar is depreciating in value against their currency. So the DXY, if that falls, the dollar is losing value against, say, let's say they're from Japan, for example. If the DXY continues to fall, the dollar is probably losing strength against the yen. So any Japanese investor who's invested in the U.S. markets, if the, if the stock market isn't outperforming the fall or the depreciation in, in the currency, then they probably sell the stocks in order to sell the dollar so they can use the yen. Essentially, that's how, that's how it would work. So let's say capital flows out of um, the S&P and, and the stock market, and then that flows also into crypto. This could give us that short-term move up into all-time highs before monetary policy and e monetary policy catches up easing and liquidity starts to come back into the markets before election so as we know crypto has basically just chopped since march is when gold's taken the lead it's taken all the momentum away from crypto specifically not gold specifically but that's where a lot of the capital's been flowing so we've got a few avenues where capital could flow back into crypto and then when we do start to hit this um expansion of liquidity and um and monetary easing around the world. It's not just the US that are easing. So we talk about the US, but they basically give the green light to everyone because everyone kind of pegs their current, not pegs, but compares their currency to the US as the denominator. So when the US ease, it gives all the other countries around the world a chance to ease too. So your Chinas, your Europe's, the UK's, Japan. All these people might or might not change their monetary policy, are they, but they have more opportunity to be loose if the US are loose. So this obviously increases the amount of capital that can, again, flow around the system and again be picked up by crypto basically my thought process is in the short term if we can get one of these little outcomes so gold maybe flow some gold into crypto because people are speculating on appreciation right now rather like this is an if people are speculating on appreciation right now rather than safety of gold that breaks us into all-time highs gold pulls back and you need six percent pullback to double the crypto market cap we've just shown you that then monetary policy becomes loose and um, and they start to stimulate economies for whatever reason. Let's say it's just based on the job market. Extra capital flows into the system. As um, Arthur Hayes says, there's probably about 500 billion to 4.8 trillion they can put into the markets if needed. That I, all of this funneling into crypto whilst people are all trying to ride the same horse would create an ultimate squeeze for crypto. Um, so I hope you can understand what I'm saying. Here, that, that there's a world where Look at, look at the RSI, look, we've, we've pulled all the way back down here. We're at all time highs of the previous cycle. We've chopped around for six months, no, four, four months, four and a half months. And it feels like forever, but it doesn't take much for us to start pushing into a zone and then for that, to, that ball to keep rolling. Then let's say some countries around the world start recognizing crypto, sovereign wealth funds start buying it because, or announce that they're buying it. These narratives roll into each other. Um, and basically, I think that's about where I think that the ultra bull case could come from. The DXY could break down or even the DXY could stay strong. Um, if equities sold off a little because the DXY broke down and foreign investors trying to get capital into something else, they might plow that into crypto. If just gold, for example, pulled back 6%. 
two trillion dollars would be available for the market maybe that flows into cryptos as i said i wrote about that at the start of the year there's a lot of variables here when monetary policy becomes loose crypto is, is the best performing asset class it has been historically for the last two three cycles so there is a lot on the ultra bull case here and this could really see crypto send and the, and the thing that i that i mean about ultra bull is like conservatively people are talking about 100 120 150k bitcoin we could go all the way out to like 240 250 if we see something like that so there is a chance and again like i don't want you to think this is my base case because it's not this is the ultra bull remember let's say between now and election or, or between now and october we get the break for bitcoin 86k for example and then we come back just just cool off just a little that's from the, some of the rotation of gold or gold rotates faster for whatever reason and we and we have more of a spike up towards straight up towards 100 from this breakout area everyone's like okay cool that's it it's, it's cool enough monetary policy then changes we go into what, late october um, and then we start creeping up higher and break we could seriously break out here for crypto um, people start to adopt around the world governments um, sovereign wealth funds start to announce that they've got bitcoin on their balance sheet for example we start to see that real squeeze up we could really quite quickly get up into these sorts of areas and like it sounds stupid i know it does and like even drawing it out like it feels kind of insane to say it but it's not the first time that we would have seen something like this if we look for example at this pattern here um, where is my bars pattern it's a it's a really hard thing which which also makes it slightly more likely that it's really hard to talk about because no one no one dares talk about it no one dares talk about it but this is the sort of period we're in no one dares talk about it because in the last cycle everyone got stung so badly trying to um, talk about large price targets and we didn't make it so no one really dares talk about um, large price targets in general and I'm going to show you the BLX because it's where's the BLX it's possible is, is the point that I'm making the, there is an ultra bull scenario out there let me get rid of this but this is the cycle before this is the 2020-2021 cycle where we got the double peak all time high the cycle before that 2014 into 2017 we're in this period here if we were in that cycle and if we were in that cycle for example this is the sort of pop that crypto could get. That's obviously with uh, larger market caps, you have depreciating returns. But that, this is what I'm saying is that there is a possibility out there for something like this to happen. Anyone who told you there's not isn't operating on fact. There are a lot of things that suggest it will not. And as I say, it's not my base case. This is the ultra bull scenario. There's a diminishing returns theory um with with large market caps we've got provable so far that every cycle the, the highs are lower but but there is always a but you could argue this is a stunted um cycle because of that people are emotionally displaced that they don't want to predict that um, the market's going to go to any sort of extreme high because it's very easy to look stupid in this in this condition or situation but it is possible. There's an ultra bull scenario out there where very soon we start ripping. Supply has been sucked up by extra people, demand like extra demand that we didn't have in previous cycles. All it takes is some rotation of capital, the easing of policy and people to recognize crypto on a larger scale. Maybe there's some sort of international dispute about crypto like BRICS nations, for example, do start to trade it. And that means that Western nations or, or US based uh, nations are like okay well we need to compete with these because we can't let them have a compete in um, policy and they need to scoop up crypto like there's a lot of variables there are lots of ifs and very hard ifs but there is an ultra bull scenario where very quickly we start to march to all-time highs and i think that would spell a lot of pain for everybody as well which which does put it as a possibility in my book because even me for example i think there's going to be a short-term pullback but if there wasn't and we just started marching a lot of us would be left sidelined with our short-term cash and some people sell these ranges like quite heavily and then they'll be fomoing back into the markets as well so 
Yeah, there's a lot of if buts and maybes. You've got a lot of people about to come online in terms of like buying crypto. We've got people coming back for Q3, Q4 um, after their, their holidays for institutional um, cash management, monetary policy loosening, big pumping gold that needs to cool off potentially. DXY is the, a dodgy one. S&P is also a bit of a question mark as well. But if the S&P sells off or the Magnificent 7 sell off and, and blockchain backer revert, refers to depth in the market or breadth, um, maybe the Russell and, and the small cap starts to pop off in, in the wider markets. There's a lot of if, buts and maybes around this, but there's definitely potential here for the ultra bull scenario. So I hope, you, hope I've explained that well. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. It's not my base case, but it's definitely a possibility. Um, if you did enjoy the video, please let me know and share with a friend. Also, comment down below if you've got any questions. I feel like my explanation was quite, like, I don't know, not very clear. Um, but if you do have any questions, then let me know. Um, peace up, A-Town Down. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in.